ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट अबाउट दी माइक्रोब्स इन ह्यूमन वेलफेयर द मोमेंट आई टॉक अबाउट वेलफेयर द बायोटेक्नोलॉजी आल्सो फॉर दैट वी आर डूइंग मैन्युपुलेशन वी आर डूइंग मैन्युपुलेशन इन द जीनोम और दी वी कैन से द डीएनए ऑफ द होस्ट सेल टू गेट समथिंग देयर आर लॉन्ग मेथड वाज दैट बट राइट नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सी वी कांट अल्टर एवरी टाइम विद द जीन्स वी कैन अल्टर द कल्चर राइट सो माइक्रोब्स आर अ डाइवर्स प्रोटोजोआ बैक्टीरिया फंगाय और फंजाय Microscopic plant viruses, viroids. What is viruses? We know that viroids are the one who, can, like bacteriophages, who can actually eat on the viruses, and also prions that are prote proteinaceous infectious agents. They are found everywhere on the earth, right? Everywhere they can found on, ranging from the soil, air, water, and some inhabitant places. So bacteria, fungi can grow on the nutritive media to form a colonies. To form what? A colonies. Which can be seen by the naked eyes and also useful in the study of microbes. Now tell me one thing: if this is a petri dish, there is a one colony is forming here, and the another bacteria colony is forming here. The time will come; they will secrete something, and they will secrete something. Yes or no? That is what antibiotics. So here we are getting the ant first antibiotic was discovered was penicillin by Alexander. Okay. So we are talking about something here. So microbes cause many diseases in a human being, plants, and animals. Several microorganisms are useful to man, to man in a diverse ways. Like curd, we are eating a curd. Lactobacillus, we are actually eating. E. coli, we are eating. There is no problem. Microbes in household products. So what are the household products microbes? So let's see. Lactobacillus will be the thing. So microbes like Lactobacillus, other commonly called lactic acid bacteria, lab lactic acid bacteria will be there, grown in the milk and convert it to the curd. The lab produces the acid that coagulate and partially digests the milk protein. It also improves nutritional quality by increasing vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 they are giving. Okay. So in our stomach too, the lab plays very beneficial role in the checking disease causing microbes. If the lab is not proper, what is lab? If they are not properly maintained, that means something is there hindering them, something is bothering them. So if they grow properly, beneficial for us. If their uh, colonies are decreasing, that means some other microbes are there in in the environment. Okay, so now the dough is used to making the food such as a dosa. It is fermented by the bacteria. Which bacteria? The Puff appears to the dough is due to the production of CO two, right? Like yeast, mostly the yeast is there. In a cake, we use the yeast. Yeast is what reproducing, and the carbon dioxide is bubbled up. So that's why dough get a fluffy appearance. The dough used for the making bread is fermented using the baker yeast. Yeast is called as a Saccharomyces cerevisiae. What is that? Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the scientific name of a yeast. So that is why use. Can I say that is a traditional method? Yes. So cheese, say cheese. Okay, so cheese is the one of the oldest food item in the which microbes were used. If you know the cheese production method, na you will not eat cheese because that is undergo many processes. So the large holes in the Swiss cheese are due to the production of large amount of CO two by the bacterium. So ultimately, cheese is production of what bacteria? Name which bacteria? Can you read that? Propi, Propinio bacterium, Shermani. What a name! What a name! Right, a scientific name is there. This is responsible for what CO two production in our cheese. Okay, the Rafford cheese is ripened by grow, uh, growing specific fungus on the particular flavor. Are you getting my point? What kind of cheese we are eating? We fond of the cheese. We want cheese, cheese. But actually, the bacteriums are used. Fungus is used for uh, giving flavor to the cheese, and that we are eating. But that is edible one, okay. Otherwise, it is a problematic one. Now, microbes in industrial production. A number of products like beverages, such as mostly the things, right? We are getting um antibiotics involve use of microbes. Antibiotic, I do just told you the process, okay. Production on the large scale requires a growing microbes in very large vessel called the fermenters. A big big fermenters are there, okay. Can anybody know how the sugar cane? Uh, from the sugar, from the sugar, we get, sorry, from the sugar cane we get a sugar. A fermentation process is also there, right? So 
lot of things are going on here let's go further so today i will go a little slow can you see fermenters how many how much big are they so fermented beverages saccharomyces cerevisiae ye used for the bread making and commonly called brewers yes is called a brewers yeast it is used for the fermenting malted cereals and fruit juices to produce a beverages like a wine beer whiskey and rum so these beverages are for what alcoholic product right and these alcoholic products are getting from which fermentation process okay so mostly the fermentation are the one so in case of wine how old is wine most price will be there more fermented fermentation is there right so wine and beer are a produce without distillation whereas whiskey brandy and rum are produced by the distillation of the fermented what is distillation distillation method you must have heard two mixture of two solutions are there okay one solute and solute something if we heat it those who have a lesser boiling point it can be vaporized off right that is a distillation process so antibiotics they are a chemical substance what are the antibiotics they are a chemical substance they are a chemical substance produced by the some microbes and can kill or retard the retard means what to prevent the growth of other microbes so antibiotics are useful for example i am suffering from salmonella typhi infection typhoid so i need some antibiotic what antibiotic will be there some microbes x y z is killing the salmonella typhi so i have some secretion that that secretion that enzyme it is antibiotic i'm taking it and i i am the host right now to the host i'm not getting any affected but when i uh, eat that uh, antibiotic or whenever the antibiotic is in my blood what are the infectious other is there it will be killed off okay so penicillin was the first antibiotic to be discovered antibiotics have a great improve our capacity to treat the deadly disease such as a plague right now there is no plague at all because of the antibiotic use whooping cough not the really cases diphtheria and leprosy this all are eradicated from our society mostly chemical organic acid enzyme other bioactive molecules are commercially sorry commercially sorry commercially produced by microbes like sugar products are some there okay now chemicals what are the chemical first asparagus niger fungus citric acid we are getting from there this is very important you need to understand in this chapter you know to some scientific name what they are produce so citric acid production asparagus niger is present what is that fungus will be there then acetobacterium aceti bacterium is there acetic acid you can correlate and you get the idea clostridium butyricum or bacterium butyric acid again butyricum then lactobacillus bacterium lactic acid saccharomyces cerevisiae ethanol will be there in your picture okay now we're going to talk about the enzymes so what chapter we talking about what is the chapter name just repeat it we talking about the microbes in a human welfare so we talk about the some important things over here just we started with the this things now enzyme what is enzyme can anybody tell me what do you mean by enzyme enzyme is an enzyme wow nice definition what is enzyme short acting one targeted oriented one right so when you talk about the enzyme they must be ended with ase so lipase is responsible for use in a laundry detergent okay so this lipase enzyme is used in a laundry detergent now let's talk about this pectinase and a protease used in a bottle juices why to give the more shelf life to the bottle obviously whatever there is drinking is there right so they need to be we don't uh, tend to uh, check the expiry date why because shelf life is enhanced because of this enzyme but maybe sometimes it's a problematic so always do check the expiry date of every product streptokinase ase stands for enzyme streptococcus bacterium used as a clot buster to remove the clot so it is as remove the clot what is clot If the platelets are, for example, here I'm getting a cut, so prom thrombin, prothrombin, vitamin K, calcium will be come together to uh, trigger the platelets. That there will be clot will be formation. Now clot is what? If the clot is externally, you can remove it, but clot is internally that is the problem. So you need a streptococcus bacterium, that is streptokinase, to use the clot buster to dissolve it. Okay, so that is the use of the thing. So can I say that if naturally 
if the the process is called naturally removing of clot inside the body is called fibrinolysis because fibrin threads are there right other factors are also there so fibrin threads are there but it is not getting removed off so we need a medical science that we can use streptokinase this point is clear now bioactive molecules cyclosporin a trichoderma polyspermum fungi used as a immunosuppressive agent for an organ transplant patient Suppose someone is having a problem with the kidney, that kidney has to be transplanted. The other organs are to be transplanted. Obviously, a lot of pain will be there. It is not a machine that you just joined and hooked. Nothing, right? Not, not like that. So, there will be a pain inside after the operation, post operation, and after the operation. Obviously, body is trying to cope up with that things, the surgery and all. So, after the anesthesia is got removed off, see, anesthesia you can't give a longer period of time. Body has to be maintain the mechanism okay so what going to happen in this case they need to need to withstand or resist the pain so that time cyclosporin a used as a immunosuppressant means what the organ was not that body earlier we just transplanted so body will be feeling that this is something foreign particle so she the body should not react as a foreign particle towards that organ which is just transplanted okay so that time cyclosporin a is utilized this point is clear then state statins, monocascus purpurus yeast, okay, purpurus is used to blood, used as a blood cholesterol lowering agent. What is atheroclerosis? Atheroclerosis or arteriosclerosis? This is the lumen of the vein or the artery. If the cholesterol is getting saturated, again, accumulated there, what is going to happen? What is the problem? Either whatever the blood amount should be passed, it's not passing right now. So it's creating problem on the heart ultimately. So that problem can be solved by use of blood cholesterol lowering agent. So we need a cholesterol level low. So we use the statins. Majority of the oils, edible oils contain this. Not exactly, but little amount will be there. Now, microbes in a sewage treatment. Yes, that is very, very important. Why microbes are important in sewage treatment? What is sewage? What are the waste? Water is there has to be treated before the living into the uh, environment or the ocean because ultimately it's going to create a problem. So we needed that treatment. So municipal wastewater, this sewage contains large amount of organic matter and microbes. It's from where we get a water or this sewage is, we can't say that from everywhere we get it. We has to be treated properly. Now tell me one thing during rainy season, if the sewage system is not working properly, what will happen? All water will become out and getting mixed with the Drinking water, even the area will become problematic, right? Why? Because contamination can be occur, and more, many more disease born, I mean, waterborne disease can be happen. So we have to prevent that. So which are pathogenic and cannot be discharged into natural water bodies like rivers and streams. So what do we do? Sewage is treated in a sewage treatment plant to make it less. We can't remove the all toxins. We can make it less toxic. So make the less polluting by using a heterotropic microbes those microbes are responsible for eating out those toxic things they can fade on the toxic thing so at least we minimize it naturally present in the sewage sewage treatment is done two stages what are the those stages okay i'm going to show you this in a other things just right now in a primary treatment floating debris is removed by the sequential filtration that is grit soil and small pebbles are removed by the sedimentation so primary and secondary treatments are there. Okay. In I guess ninth or class nine, you have talked about this na? sewage water treatment plant or something. Okay. Let let me talk about that. Okay. So secondary treatment or biological treatment. Okay, just one second. Now water treatment plant. What is water treatment plant? Where we get a sewage water collected. Okay, once it collected it, some toxins, some microbes has to be removed from it. So in this case, what we can do? We what we can do a wastewater treatment. West water treatment will be do. First, raw sewage is, is greed. Can you see that? A mesh like structures are there. So, whatever the debris, which is, uh, we can say, the not dissolve in the water, like cans, papers, bigger stones, can be screened out from here. That is the first statement. Then it goes, goes to the comminator. What is comminator? Rolling things are going on. So, whatever is there, they can just lift it away. So, what we are again doing in this process, we are removing the uh, non dissolvable molecules, no, non dissolvable substance are we are removing, removing out of okay, plastic 
cloth will be there. Okay, they are removing off. Now we have a grid chamber. What is the grid chamber? What is the grid chamber here? Grid chamber is the one who can give the sedimentation. What is sedimentation? If the water, if if you what we mix the water with the soil, and you can keep for sand for one hour, what is going to happen? All the sand particles will be settled down, and the above water will be not pure. You can say, but yes, you can distinguish between them. So similarly, grid chamber is working in this. After the grid chamber, there is a primary clarifier. Can you see here primary effluent and a raw primary sludge? What is the sludge? Whatever the debris is there that got settled down. Okay. Once it gets settled down, it can be used. It can be go away and it can be used as a fertilizer. Okay. Now, what is happening here? Some microbes are there. What is that? Some microbes are there. They growing over there. This is go to the aeration tank. What is the aeration tank? We are giving oxygen. So microbes will be growing more. So whatever the removal part is there, whatever the debris is there, whatever the toxic part or whatever the nutritious part is there, that is eaten up by some microbes. Okay. So what do we do? We remove the unwanted material, which is not dissolvable. Now we are removing what? Which is dissolved nutrients. What is nutrients? Nutrients for the bacteria. Nut we are for us. It's not nutrient. It's a toxic one. Okay. Can we drink that water? Definitely no. So what is going to happen? Aeration tank is there. Microbes are growing. Obviously, when microbes are going, what is going to happen? They will eaten up those things. Okay. Now that goes to the air compressor. Air compressor is what giving air. Now it's go to the secondary clarifier where what is going to happen? The sludge is activated. What is the activated sludge? Now there are microbes inside. Now once it activated again, sedimentation goes down. Now, above layer is what above layer of water is purified right now. Not as much purified, but it is removed with the toxin. And this is undergo the secondary effluent, discharged to the surface water. This can be sent to the river or other water bodies. We can't send this directly. So this is a water treatment plant. You got the point? So what are the use of bacteria? Your microbes are used. Getting my point? Okay. So we have seen this primary, secondary, and tertiary treatment. So in primary treatment, floating debris, whatever is not dissolving by sequential filtration, like mesh-like structure is there, rollers are there. Okay, grit. Grit means what? Mesh-like structures. Okay, grit is mesh-like structures. Soil and small pebbles are removed by the sedimentation. Sediment. Secondary treatment of a biological treatment involves the passing of primary effluent. What is primary effluent? The water which is now removed with the pebbles, what uh, cans, plastic, clothes, material and all. Now it's a primary effluent. Effluent means what? We are going to do something on that. So in a large aeration tank. What is aeration tank? Where the microbes will be growing. So help to grow the aerobic microbes. Not anaerobic. Aerobic. Masses of bacteria associated with the fungal filaments from the mesh-like structure. Okay. Flocks. So if the microbes is growing. What is going to happen? They form a flock. Cellular mass will be there. So that has to be floating or then can be mostly that can be sedimented. That is called activated sludge. This micro increase the consumption of organic waste. They use what? Organic waste. Organic waste is removed by this aerobic microbes. And the BOD. What is BOD? Bi biological oxygen demand of the effluent is finished. Because everything is used up. So BOD is the amount of oxygen that would be consumed if all the organic matter in the one liter of the water were oxidized by bacteria. What is that BOD? What is BOD full from biological oxygen demand in one ml of water? If suppose in one liter of water, some organic material is there. If you add the bacteria, they take up the oxygen. So how much amount of oxygen they're taking? We can actually calculate how much organic matter is there. Getting my point? We're going opposite. Aeration tank you just see. So how much amount of oxygen you are giving? How they utilizing it? We can have a record. On those records, we can understand, oh, this much organic matter is there. Because obviously, oxidation should be there. Right? Okay. So it measures the amount of organic matter present in it. So how can you find out how much organic matter present in a wastewater, in an aeration tank? How much oxygen is utilized by microbes? You have a control on, control on it. So how much amount of oxygen you use? Exactly equal to how much organic material was present. Water, great, greater the BOD of water, more is polluted. Are you getting my point? Jitna zada kya hoga? B 
प्योरी होगा उतना ज्यादा वाटर पोल्यूशन है तो वी नीड अ मोर अमाउंट ऑफ ऑक्सीजन शुड बी सप्लाइड वंस द प्योरी ऑफ सीवेज और वेस्ट वाटर इज रिड्यूस द इफ्लुएंट इज देन पास वॉट इज इफ्लुएंट वी आर ट्रीटिंग ऑन इट ना दैट इज इफ्लुएंट देन पास इन टू द सेटलिंग टैंक वॉट इज सेटलिंग टैंक सेडिमेंटेशन इज गोइंग टू अकर अगेन वेर द बैक्टीरियल फ्लॉक्स आर अलाउड टू सेडिमेंट तो दिस इज कॉल्ड एक्टिवेटेड स्लच इट इज यूज एज अ फर्टिलाइजर्स This sediment is called a activated sludge. What is activated sludge? Bacteria are there. Yes or no? Bacteria uh, uh, with organic material are there. So we need to remove it. Above part will be you are not purified, filter one. Okay. So sludge is passed into the last tank called a anaerobic. Now, uh, now what is the problem? There is a problem. Aerobic bacteria we can we can take care of that. What about the anaerobic anaerobic? There is some material which cannot be break down with the aerobic bacteria. So some material is should be done with what help of anaerobic. So here anaerobic sludge, this digester in which anaerobic bacteria digest the bacteria and fungi in the sludge. So aerobic give rise to the flock that is contain fungus factor mesh like structure that can be digested with the help of anaerobic. Getting my point? So pro mixture produces the gas called the biogas. So in waste water we get can also get the biogas, which is mixture of methane, hydrogen sulfide, and a carbon dioxide. The effluent from the secondary treatment plant are released into the water bodies. After biomass, biogas, we can remove that water. Okay, understood this? Now microbes in a production of biogas. From ninth standard onwards, we are studying this diagram. Yes or no? Almost. Yeah. So microbes in production of biogas. What is biogas? Methane. But along with methane, something is also there. So biogas is a mixture of gases produced by the microbial activity that can be used as a fuel. Certain bacteria that grows anaerobically on a cellulosic material produce large amount of methane along with a carbon dioxide and hydrogen. These bacteria are collectively called a methanogenous. Methanogenous. What word is that? Methanogens. Methanogens. Who are responsible for production of methane? And that is called methanobacterium. Can you see that dung is there? It is goes here. Gas will be prepared here, and this dome-like structure is floating on the water. And this is connected to gas. This is called gas holder. And this is sludge. What is sludge? All the nutrients are used up right now. So this will be sludge, or it I can be used as a fertilizer further. Not an issue with that. now biogas plant what is a biogas plant the extra cattle that is gobar is rich in a methanogenous bacteria and used for the generation of biogas also called a gobar gas you must have seen the cow dung has a specific smell because of this methanogenous bacteria the technology of biogas production was developed in india mainly due to the efforts efforts of the indian agriculture research that is a i a r i and khadi and village industries Commissions. Biogas plant consists of a concrete tank. Can you see that? This is the concrete tank diagram. Will be asked even in ninth standard. You also know that how to do that. Okay. So in which bio waste are collected and a slurry. What is slurry? What is slurry? This is sludge. This is slurry on what dome is getting floated. Okay. So that slurry is what is happening with the slurry. Let's see. Slurry is spread. a floating cover is placed over the digester methane is getting up upside acha one more uh, going want to ask in a marshy land or a swampy area there is a modification of a root what's that root lenticels nematophores because of the methane is a such a way that oxygen required for a plant but in a swampy or a marshy land methane is everywhere but oxygen has to be lower level because methane is above level oxygen level level so the plant roots plants roots are going to produce a lenticels like this they have a numerous pores that is called nematophores okay so i just want to connect those things so nematophores are responsible for exchange of gases because marshy area or swampy area lot of methane is there a smell is there right so plant is not get proper oxygen or the carbon dioxide so that for that was why they converted root into nematophores okay just i remember that's why i told you the spent slurry is removed through the another outlet and used as a fertilizers so we get in two products biogas along with the 
fertilizers. Biogas plant is more often built in the rural areas. Why not here? <laughs> we don't have a cow dung at all, almost nothing. So in rural area, but we can we do biogas generation with the help of human feces? We can do that, but production of biogas will be slower because cow dung has a methane bacteria. And I mean, human feces do not contain that. Okay. Now, biological control. Let's talk about the microbes as a biocontrol. What is biocontrol? What do you mean by biocontrol? Can anybody tell me what is biocontrol? Biologically control things. Bio war. Coronavirus was a bio war. Don't you think so? It spread like within fractions, right? How? Just the modification, biotechnology I'm talking about. Just the modification of a cough virus or cough bacteria in a such a way that it produces a lung collapse. So it is problematic, right? Symptom was very minute. Headache, uh, fever. That's a minute one, like cough only. So what is that modification? Leads to the bio war. Don't you think so? I don't want to blame any country. You know what country is that, okay? So microbes as a biocontrol agent. Biocontrol means use of a biochemical method for a controlling plant disease and a paste. The chemical use as a pesticides and insecticides are harmful to the human beings and animals. Biological control of the pest and disease is the method of controlling the pest on a natural production rather than the chemicals. So the organic farmer creates a system. Organic farmers create a system where the pests are not, why? Pests are not eradicated but kept at a manageable level by the complex system check. What is happening here? Pesticides are used to kill the pest. But what has happened? On the fruit, on the vegetables, on the crops, pesticides are stuck. I mean, are there. So what are going to prop, what are going to happen over here? We can eat that. Even you can take a banana or you see banana is safe right now. Uh, apple. You can see the waxy coating on the apple. It may be of cuticle, but some pesticides also there. So, so what we suggested to wash off properly, right? Everything is so that's why we prefer instead of artificial fertilizer, we can prefer organic farming where fertilizers are lesser used. But in organic farming, what is the problem? Cost is much more. So the product of organic are not cheaper as compared to the artificial one. So check and balance with the living and vibrant ecosystem. Now, what is the problem? Okay. Suppose here is a farmer is farming and here is a river. Okay. What is going to happen? Farming is done here. He using the pesticide. May happen this, we go to the river. Inside the river, there are fishes. Fish can be, you eat up the pesticides. Those fish can be catched by the fishermen. Fishermen can be sell the fish into the market. Ultimately, the humans are going to eat it. Anyhow, they are coming, right? So it is getting a problem. So the ladybird and the dragonflies are used to get rid of the ephebirds and mosquito respectively. Means what? Some plants, you should have some plants. Like in Marathi, it's called Kadulimba plant. Or we can say uh, neem plant. Okay, it is used for what? Mosquito repellent. So they can be used that. So on the brassicas and the fruit tree, the control of the butterfly, caterpillars, bacteria, bacillus, thuringiensis is used. So what is this? In application of biotech, we have studied that bacillus thuringiensis is the one. It's like a bowl worm. BT cotton. Cotton, it's not an edible thing. Cotton is for making, making of making of clothes. So cotton seed has to be protected. If a bowl worm is going to eat the cotton fruit or something seed, one the moment he eat, there is one bacteria that's called Bacillus thuringiensis. We already cultivated those genes into the cotton such a way that when the bowl worm eat it, it will be died. Getting my point? See, we can't do this in the brinjal or rice because we are eating that rice in the cotton is a commercial product, so we can do that. That is the application of biotechnology. Biological control developed for a use in the treatment of the plant disease is the fungus trichoderma. Trichoderma are a free living fungi that are very common in the root system of the control several plants of pathogen. Leguminous plant we can talk about, right? They get a nitros and all over there. This point is very clear. Now let's talk about this. Baculovirus are the pathogen. What is pathogens? Harmful. They create a problem that's a harmful one. So what is happening here? What is happening here? 
attack the insects and other arthropods the majority of the baculovirus used as a biological control agent are the genus like most arthropoda is on farming you can use a baculovirus for that nucleo poly hydrovirus nucleo poly hydrovirus this virus is an excellent candidate for the species species specific narrow spectrum insecticidal application what is this if uh, suppose i am doing a rice farming on rice farming there is a particular this is on the rice only on other uh, varieties there is no so what is going to happen if i am going to use a specific like antibiotics are narrow spectrum or a broad spectrum initially doctor give us broad spectrum if they treated very well that's fine then if it's not treatment is not good or uh, so we are suffering still suffering we get a narrow spectrum narrow spectrum we can't use for a longer time why if the bacteria get used to with narrow spectrum we can't use that getting my point so they get a resistant towards that so i like mosquito got got resistant towards the that coil structure we are flaming right or the spray we are spraying that now right now what are we doing use the electrical bat they can't be uh, modified with that right so narrow spectrum insecticide application is the last choice this point is clear now microbes as a bio fertilizer yes this point is very important here when you talk about the bio fertilizer what is the first point come into your mind bio fertilizers are the organism that enrich the nutrients quality of the soil without hindering the quality of the soil they're just adding up for example what do you mean by insectovirus plant they are a photo they have they are they're doing the photosynthesis because they are autotroph but they need nitrogen or phosphorus in that soil that is not present so they tend to be eat the insects so they can get the nourishment okay so bio fertilizers are one organism that enrich the nutrients the main source of includes bacteria fungi or cyanobacteria cyanobacteria is important blue green algae is also called the cyanobacteria the root nodule formed by the rhizopus rhizobium bacteria nodule plant leguminous plant on the root leguminous plant increases the nitrogen level see plant in atmosphere we have a 78% of nitrogen 78 or 72 almost 78 right but plant is not able to take up directly so plant requires this rhizopus bacteria to convert nitro atmospheric nitrogen to nitrates and nitrites and from the root it can be absorbed yes or no necessary for a various metabolic process azobacterium and the azosprilium are the free living bacteria that live in the soil fix atmospheric nitrogen into the organ sorry organic forms getting my point so these are the important things over there the last but not least we going to talk about the symbiotic association what is symbiotic association fungi with a angiosperm plants what is the mutualism one is getting benefited and one is not getting harm like e coli in intestinal part we are getting vitamin b12 from them and we get we are giving them shelter so symbiotic association fungi with a angiosperm plants that is called mycorrhiza also increase the fertility of the soil fertility of soil means what the nutrition is taken see continuously farming leads to the lesser fertility of the soil so we need a crop such a way that they can give fertility again so we can use that so glomus forms of mycorrhiza that absorb the phosphorus from the soil phosphorus and passes it to the plant because plant require phosphorus what is fertilizers npk nitrogen phosphorus potassium and pk okay so this microbes also provide the benefit like resistant to the root borne pathogens because phosphorus is there root is much more active tolerance to the salinity what is salinity salt salt in the soil leads to the problem so it has to be tolerant what is problem of salt if the cell is there salt is a highly concentration so cell lysis will be there whatever the content of the soil is go outside now cyanobacteria nostac and anamena not that anamena okay <laughs> and autotrophic microbes found in a aquatic and a terrestrial environment fix the atmospheric nitrogen in a paddy field this act as a important bio fertilizers in a paddy field example in rice cultivation paddy fields are there right so blue green algae also add a organic matter to the soil and increases fertility so here we cover the microbes okay